And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Mist Wraith Control. Going to be our first deck of the day here today on this wonderful Thursday morning stream. Um, this one's going to be a, a viewer submitted donation deck that is all about Mist Wraiths. We're going to have Wraith Caller, Risen Mist, and regular Mist Wraiths. So all that kind of Mist Wraith card. And then that's not even enough. We have uh, a Terrative Improvement from Piltover and Zaun that we are splashing um, in here to be able to pick a follower and create a copy of it in hand with the plus one plus one which that can either go with mist wraith or of course also very good with wraith caller as well so we have <clears throat> a lot of ways to get uh, these mist wraiths in play but while we're doing that and you like we're going to be uh, getting all this other fearsome stuff like arachnoid horror elise frenzy skitter these are all fearsome callista's fearsome um, you know so my we're going to be putting pressure on my opponent and they're going to be uh, struggling to stabilize if they can't stabilize, great for us. We're going to kill them. If they can stabilize, we got triple ruination um, to just wipe the board clean. And the reason why that's important, because then maybe they play a unit or two, but then we can follow up the ruination with harrowing with all of our uh, mist rates coming back, being even stronger, and that's just going to make it too difficult for them to be able to handle a wide board after we ruination. So we have this nice little combo in here with ruination and harrowing at the top end as well it looks to be a pretty sweet deck looks to be a pretty good one uh, i think we'll do well we're gonna go play our five games over in master's rank looks like we're number nine to start the day <laughs> it's not exactly how that is but you know we have nine points in masters okay draven ezreal our first deck Let's see if they can kill mist rates they usually do a pretty good job of killing Mist Wraiths uh, with having Mystic Shot. But of course, we'll have our two champions. Good place to start. Oh, and the prediction has started. For those of y'all here um, in Twitch chat that want to wager your fight. channel points. You won't suffer long. Alright, well, good start. Do not have removal for Elise. Good start. The party has arrived. We, we shall not rest until all betrayers. Um, I think I'll just skip the block. I think I can go to 17. That's fair. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I was hoping I was going to be able to have next turn with, you know, like the Black Spear and everything, but no. So they did have, like, that get excited. They could have killed my Elise and chose not to. You think it's just Wraith Caller? Because Wraith Caller, I don't get Vile Feast, but I guess I can have Vile Feast afterwards. Yeah, I guess I can have, I can just cast Vile Feast next turn. Why would Wraith Caller be better than, like, Horror plus Mist Wraith? Skitter would, like, have, like, my Elise trade with their Draven... And also force them to cast, like, it forces them to cast the Spinning Axe to be able to block. Yeah, I don't know, like, these two may have been better. At least against that. With them being fearsome. Hey, buddy, what you doing? Yeah, but like, so now I have to use Vile Feast to kill the Draven, where if I would have played the Skitter, the Draven would just be dead. Well, that's alright. Um, we can, we, yeah, we can set, we can try to set up a, an even better Frenzy Skitter turn. Thanks, Bramboria. Hey, Gucci. Suck. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. And uh, playing Frenzied Skitter would not have stopped the, the Ezreal from hitting me, assuming they would use the, mist, the uh, spinning axes. Uh, 
Uh, they, they still get their four mana unit. Even if I glimpse beyond. Um, but... Might as well use the glimpse beyond right now, because like, that's what that mana would be there for there anyway. It just... It does take away a target for the Ezreal. That's the best thing it does. You're between me and glory. And yeah, board like so the harrowing is a good draw that like makes like all the like these kind of trades like really not that bad because of the harrowing. Uh, we need the like we don't want that kind of stuff in play. If we don't want these like little spiders and stuff in play. Um Now this is difficult. I obviously really want a terror to prove it on the Wraith Caller, but I also want to do this. So I hope they don't kill my Wraith Caller. That's too bad. That went pretty good. No, no, no. Wonder if we played ten cards with different names. I got ways to find me mushrooms. Of course we have, because we're great. <laughs> Skilled gamer. Alright, go get him harrowing. Let's go. Kill that spider. Uh, they didn't kill the spider. Double Callista. I think it's probably worth attacking with the 2 1. Yeah, we can attack with that just fine. them to one. So close. So this Vile Feast would get rid of their Subpersible. Um, but then, of course, it does give me another spider, and I don't really want that other spider.
All right, I guess we get the other spider with one being able to die here to the Draven. Okay. So I don't get the spider and I don't heal my Nexus for one. Which, you know, I'd, I'd prefer to heal my Nexus for one, but... I mean, yeah, because they basically are, are thinking, like, they're not going to be able to cast that Ravenous Flock anyway, so that does one damage to me. But, of course, they could just discard that Ravenous Flock. And there we go. Good job, Harrowing. No Captain Farron on their side. That was, like, the big thing that I was really worried about was Captain Farron. Okay, we're going to be playing the more aggressive version of our deck with... Um, Targon for Pale Cascade is going to be their splash. I definitely feel like Ruination could be pretty good. If they're going to be more aggressive going wide a little bit better than us. We may, we may need to be able to catch up with that. Um, they also have like the 4-3 for me to use a Terrative Improvement on. I know what lurks in the shadow. All right, channel point. Yeah, channel point predictions are up. We could use a bite. So if they had Mist Wraith, we'd be doing great, right? How they wouldn't be able to block a lease, but they do have the Arachnoid Horror. Okay, so they would. They could have blocked a lease with the Arachnoid Horror. Decide not to, because I guess with all of their things being fearsome, they're not very scared of my lease. <clears throat> And so now I get to level up Elise because they didn't block. A tribute to the spider god. Let me change you into something more comfortable. We missed? We only have three iterative improvements in our deck and one's in our hand. I've been missing so much with just alleg with Allegiance abilities over the last few weeks. How do we miss? The last few weeks it seems like that like it's like harder to hit Allegiance. <sighs> um, so we don't have the mana for a Terrative plus Wraith Caller right now. I could go a Terrative plus like the Doom Beast to heal my Nexus a little bit. There's nothing to fear. them playing that 2-3 Elise. The 4 is nice. The 4 threes, Like, all these 4 threes we can block if they're playing a Skitterer. So that's a free kill. I'm sure I get to Ruination this next turn. I'm pretty sure I can, you know, like, they're gonna play stuff before attacks so and I can get a good Ruination in. And still just block all four things.
Okay, we didn't miss. Well, that's every single one of their Doom Beasts, right? Like, they probably don't have any more. Probably. So I kind of decided that maybe I should just be saving Ruination for their harrowing, because I guess that, that may be, like, kind of their plan is, like, harrowing against me. And so I should probably have Ruination available for their harrowing. That does turn out to be a plan of theirs. Hey, never mind. They have more Doombies. <clears throat> they got a fourth one. Yeah, like I, yeah, I think that's gonna be harrowing, and then I ruination, and then I untap and harrowing. I could play the Elise. Like, so, like, if they would... I wanted to save the man. I didn't want to glimpse you on. I want to save the man because, like, if they... If they, um... Played another thing to attack, then I could have had the Elise and block, but they didn't play another thing to attack. So there we go. So that all worked out very well. And we are currently 2-0 now with our military control deck. There we go. Twisted Ezreal. Um... <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to just mulligan the two cards that uh, kind of die a little easier. I could see keeping the Vile Feast if they're going to be going wide. Sometimes, like, these decks go wide with, like, cheaper units. Um, but I'm going to, you know, keep our things that are more difficult to kill with them being removal-based deck. And so we'll keep our Elise, Callista. The Frenzy Skitter is just pretty easy to kill. You know, it's a, a three-mana card that dies to Mystic Shot. Sending that back. We could use a bite. You dare. Where do you stand on cold shots? There can be no justice. Only I don't I don't really like casting Elise Crawling Sensation and making like two little spiders. I'd rather just have another Elise, honestly, in hand. We play in build rules, son. Yeah, Pirate Aggro is definitely good enough to climb in the current meta. Basically, everything is. Right? If you know exactly what you're doing, know how to pilot it, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, you, you, can play, you can play some Pirate Aggro. Yeah, you could probably yeah. You Rusty Wallace says you can climb with anything, even Katarina Diana, yeah. 
may not, you know, like different decks will climb at different rates, but yeah, I would be confident in, in playing that Katarina Diana and, and uh, tuning it and being able to climb with it. But also different people play different decks better or worse. For example, I like Katarina Diana is definitely my kind of playstyle. Um, and so I would probably be more confident in that kind of deck than other people. Other people would play like, you know, like this Ezreal Twisted Fate better than me. You know, like I, I, I've struggled in the past playing Ezreal decks. And so I wouldn't be as confident playing like an Ezreal Twisted Fate deck as other people would be, for example. Everybody plays decks uh, differently and better or worse than other people. So they currently have three or four fleeting cards in hand. I think three fleeting cards in hand. Let's see all of it. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Very possible I'm gonna need to just ruination soon. So even though, yeah, even though they, like, they can definitely play something there, but then I'm basically making it so they don't get to play the other fleeting cards. But unfortunately, that glimpse, that uh, get excited, and then that other card were both fleeting cards. Unfortunately. So I think they just got to get rid of, like, all their fleeting cards. I was hoping that, like, their removal spells like that, yeah, were not the fleeting cards. And that then they would also have to get rid of the fleeting stuff, but... The that worked pretty well for them. Something the matter. It's uh, Misfortune and Twisted Fate and the Undying. Scrap. <gasps> That's gonna be that was a viewer submitted donation deck. That'll be fun to play. You know, like bilge water. Uh, vulnerable stuff with the Undying and everything like that. Alright, want to get rid of this Twisted Fate before it, it levels up. Alright, getting rid of those champions. Yeah, Nashor, we'll have your deck later, the Hexcore Yeti Rush. Wiggly Burblefish. Come closer. I don't bite. Of course, my plan for next turn is the Harrowing. Alright, so that's 12 damage, put me down to 7. Hmm. 
guess I don't really need those spiderlings. You won't suffer long. Hush now. Why are you here? Jury rigs. You're getting me. That's four wiggly burble fishes down. Don't know how many they're playing, but um, that's four of them down. Or maybe they draw all five puff caps. Or none. Looks like trouble. Witness perfection, meat bags. This is going to be close. Do have the burn spells to finish it out. Those wiggly burble fishes are just amazing. You know, having those, you know, being able to play like all four of those wiggly burble fishes for basically no mana. I mean, why, why copy the Wraith Caller? I guess because it's a 5-4. They're not going to hit the Allegiance. Like, why not just copy the Ballistic Bot and create a second ignition? Not, you're not even going to be casting it now. Like, what are you doing? Alright, so we're, I guess the Twist of Fate's going to level up, so we'll be able to block. Yeah, like, why don't, why don't I just play, like, a Ballistic Bot here? Draw some puff caps, thank you. Looks like I'm on a hot There's so many puff caps. They drew so many cards and only two puff caps. And those like eight cards. So ordinary. But yeah, they would have made a ballistic bot that you know could have had another blocker, but I guess Charmed, I'm sure. they wouldn't necessarily be able to block. Come on, draw those other three puff caps. We're gonna have to get some pretty good luck to be able to win this. Ooh. I'm a people person. That's some pretty good luck. Alright, now draw puff caps. Or not. Oh, I guess I have, I have nothing to actually target with Vile Feast. Right, everything's dead. Only fools play the hand they're dealt. Okay, that's good. So 
Where's these pup caps? Why do they never draw these pup caps? Not a one. Time for a true display of skill. Who says I don't share? Come on, draw four cards, three pop caps. One, two, three. Seriously, only one? Ugh. <clears throat> Keeping the twist of fate alive for blue cards. The blue card gives them another opportunity for the pop caps, but um, you know, we gave them the they had 15 cards and we gave them five puff caps, and they've drawn, you know, about ten of the cards. They've only drawn three of the puff caps. No, they've drawn way more than ten cards. Because well, they've, they've put some cards back also. So they've put, so they've drawn like, I don't know, a whole bunch of cards. <laughs> Come on, blue card, save me. All right, so this is this is it. If that top card has two puff caps, Blue as the come on, because I can't. Like if I play something, they miss a shot, so I lose. Two puff caps? No, zero still. Man, you have such bad puff cap luck. All right, two and one. Keep these. All right, cool. So we get fearsome on two, Callista on three, double fearsome on four. And so I guess that means that we should play Arachnoid Horror on a two, because then the mist race will be. With a little time, I'll have a break. Uh, three twos on turn four. All right. Yep. Channel point prediction is up. I don't, I don't necessarily think that Unspeakable Horror would have won me the game over Vile Feast. I don't know. It's not necessarily true. It's possible, but... Not necessarily true. I mean, we are, we are in a least deck. Like, you know, we have, um... We have leveled up Elise because of Alfie so far in these games. Okay, with the Garen regeneration, whatever Garen blocks, we'll use Glimpse Beyond on. So it doesn't get the strike the first one for the level up. And then we get 9 damage across. This has been a very good last couple of turns for them. You know, Shield Bearer plus Fight on turn 3 to kill the Callista, mm -hmm. then the Grizzled Ranger. That's a very good card here. Then Garen, very good card here. Those are three, three very good turns, turn 3, 4, 5. Hey Ola, good morning. Um, yeah, so far pretty good. We're two and one. So so far it's been treating us pretty good. 
Okay, we can try to set up Ruination for, like, next turn. I can't just keep taking, like, this kind of damage forever, though, of course. So we'll go ahead and block. See, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that they're going to be going with Judgment, but I we're a we're a terrible deck against Judgment. Okay, okay, so not Judgment. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have some unique decks today. That's for sure. The Hexcore Yeti Rush and the Katarina Diana. I mean... Because, yeah, like, we force them to have the, like, that kind of stuff, to, that kind of thing to stay alive. I don't regret that attacking with the with the spider. I was, of course, really hoping they were going to play something else first. Because obviously my plan next turn is to Harrowing. So I don't I don't need the board. I was scared of, you know, like, I think it's a good pass because I was scared of, like, if I, you know, if I just cast the Ruination first with eight mana, they could, they could play 11 power worth of stuff. It's, it's possible. I mean, it's, it's all about judgment, right? Like, it, we may have this, but if they have judgment, we lose. It's not over. Not yet. Them not having a Garen in play, though, does make it more likely, you know, does make it less likely that they have a judgment, right? Because, like, the Garen. Um, yeah, and they just passed to me, so. Uh, do they have it? Yes or no? I mean, all of these things are ephemeral. There's no reason not to attack with them. Hopefully, the answer is no. Don't have it. Wow. Yeah, they're just playing Judgment. Not much to do about that, so I can either draw two or make a copy. I, I don't really need to make a copy. I guess we just draw two. Had the card they needed. All right, let's mess some folks up. Yep, 
Yeah, I think I go go Wraith Caller and maybe copy Wraith Caller. Can they do one direct damage if I take this? Probably not. Could have overwhelm, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to stop overwhelm on the Eclipse Dragon anyway. thinking maybe skitter plus copy skitter make it so these two things don't aren't able to block like they just have one blocker right now that's pretty bad for me because now now all they need is just any blocker and then I guess they get to block my a2s and I only do seven damage instead of eight with my with my double skitter plan, one blocker means it's not lethal anymore, um, and I can't really stop that because if I could go risen miss, but then they would have two blockers. So like if they if they play another blocker, then they have three. Forward in the name of the Solari. Okay, so that thing doesn't count as a blocker, at least not right now. They don't have the mana for judgment. They can they have to stay alive by playing like Pale Cascade or Single Combat or Hush. Any of those keep them alive. You know, obviously Concerted Strike's the same kind of thing as that. As any of those. They don't have any of them. Alright, that's it. They need one of those things for the AT. They did not. All right, we got there. <laughs> yep, sideways. Yeah, it's just channel points. You just get, you'll get, get more. Uh, same opponent, same deck, same opponent. So now they, they know kind of what I'm doing though. Like they're not gonna be, they're not gonna be surprised by ruination. Like this is probably um, a little worse for us that we're playing against them again. And and we saw that game that they had a lot of great fearsome blockers, like the, um, you know, the two mana. Here's some blocker, your Grizzled Ranger. My Alphys is very bad. That's the worst card in my deck in this matchup. There's nothing to fear. Unfortunately, another Vile Feast. If... Hmm. Yeah, now they have Plaza. Yeah, this this is going to be really difficult for us to win. Here we go. Okay, double vile feast. Their grizzled ranger. I don't 
do we how do we keep missing with these wraith callers? We had a two out of thirty chance. How do we keep missing with these? Yeah, and they have all the Nexus healing, too. So, we got pretty lucky to win the first game in this matchup. Does a leveled up Elise help? We must all make but like they're also playing Judgment? <laughs> they really don't want to lose this matchup. How did we even win this matchup the first time? I guess they didn't have Grand Plaza. So pretty amazing that we got to win the, the first game of that matchup, uh, looking at, at that one. Um, you know, very, very good that we got to split. Yeah, I think <laughs> I was done. I mean, it, we weren't 100% dead, obviously, um, but, uh, you know, I was kind of done playing that one. Um, I guess we do have, yeah, I guess we do have Vengeance and Ruination. Like, those are also, those are both things that can kill things. But, you know, of course, they have the nine cards in hand and all the Celestials and everything. And our chance of winning is, like, under 1% from there, probably. And um, with this already being an hour, over an hour and 10 minutes with this video, just going to go ahead and move on to our other decks today. Um, but, yeah, so there we go. That was Mr. Eighth Control. Looked pretty good. For the most part, uh, that just seemed like a kind of impossible matchup for us, um, but not necessarily. Like you know, we did win the first one. You know, like they didn't have the Grand Plaza and all that stuff like the the first game, and so like we did win the you know we did win the first one of the two. Um, I liked all the stuff that we had in here. We were really unlucky with our iterative improvement. We missed multiple times with Wraith Callers. When we you know both times we missed, we had an iterative improvement in hand, so it was like a, a two out of thirty chance about whenever we were playing it and we were missing with Wraith Callers. Um, I don't know, the last few weeks, like, it, it just seems like Allegiance, like, Miss Allegiance triggers all the time. 
you know, two out of 30, that's what one out of 15. So that should be about a 6% chance of you missing. It definitely seems like we're missing it more than six times out of 100. That's for sure. Missing it multiple times there. And uh, I've, I've just kind of had like that kind of luck recently with the Allegiant stuff. I don't know if there's, um, you know, maybe I just have bad luck, I guess. Um, but yeah, everything with the deck worked out pretty well. And it, it looked good. All right, so that's our first deck. That's Mistwraith Control. Um, pretty good. I liked this. Okay, I guess like uh, to say this, I did like this version. I, and I enjoyed playing this more than like the other uh, kind of fearsome Mistwraith aggro with like the Pale Cascades and everything. I did think that this version was better. I thought that the Ruinations were really good. We didn't draw Vengeance very much at all, but I we did have Ruination a few times that I liked that. I liked having the Ruination Harrowing combo. Um, I liked the top end that this version had, like where you, you really make people uh, sell out for the early game and you have that kind of top end. I liked that quite a bit. So I, I, I think that this, I, I would be more confident in raking up with this version than the other um, Pale Cascade uh, Fearsome version. All right, but that's it here for Mr. Eighth Control. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, leave those comments. Always love seeing those. But thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.